This is the CR30 from Creality, their belt printer. This is Pooch. Yo, I need to run this 24 seven. So we're gonna take it to the next level. There you are, welcome back. One of the cool things about Pooch is over at RepCord, he has a wall of CR30s running these things 24 seven. Yeah, I do. And in order to production harden the machines, there's been some things that he's had to do. And he's had to do things inside, he's had to do things on the machine, and he's taken them to a different location. I think it's yeah, proper to say. that's fair to say. The first thing I like to do is I updated it to the latest community firmware, which unlocks a lot of additional feature sets that we're gonna talk about shortly. Okay. We get the firmware on there, we're gonna pop the thing open. Do, do, do. Do a little surgery. Oh yeah, so those are tin. Look at that. That's super bad. That's a no-no. Move some fan headers around. So that one's gonna move right here to right the there? second spot. And then okay. we took the motherboard fan out from right under that when we took the case That's off. That's right. That's gonna go in the space oh, right just there. below. Make sure that the ferrules are crimped on there so that we're safe for running the thing 24 seven, as you mentioned. So now instead of you know, having a, a, so a potential solder joint on there that can crack and release as it heats up and cools. You've got a good contact surface that'll stay consistent on that terminal block. We've taken care of the inside of the machine. Now it's time for the parts that are gonna harden the outside of the machine. And what have you got there? So you'll notice a couple differences. Well, it's just there's two CR30s on the desk. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing that's pretty obvious is uh, we swapped out the PTFE for some Capricorn okay. cap tube. Capricorn tubing. Yeah. So in 24 seven operation, does it really make a difference? It does actually. So we found that after running these stock for about two, I got two weeks out of it, honestly, and even at PLA temperatures, uh, the uh, PTFE started to deform inside the hot end. This is not a full metal hot end right. by default, and we would get jams. And that makes us jam buds. What? easy solution we found was to use cap tube, which has a much higher uh, heat resistance to okay. it. Okay, yeah. and, and so far so good. So far so good. Okay, yeah. Capricorn tubing as an upgrade. What's yeah. next? So you'll notice the motor mounts on mine here uh, have this red housing around them. So if you look right. at the stock ones, uh, you've got, because of the way the Core XY setup is, you've got a, a higher shaft on one side than you do on the other. I have the high ground. During reviews, actually, this was mentioned as a possible failure scenario with so much tension on it. Correct, yeah. So as you tension that to keep the belts tighter, you're gonna get some degree of deflection. That's a 40 millimeter shaft, and that will start to twist. And there have already been people in the community that have actually sheared that off. Wow. So this is actually uh, NAC 3 ds design. Carl from NAC 3 d designed this and had LDO motors manufacture it, oh, and it's a really great solution. So there's a support on the top now yeah. of the motor shaft. Okay, so the support on the top really locks it into place, and you'd have to worry about deflection. Absolutely, and on top of that, this this whole frame kind of helps hold this whole thing square. Mm -hmm. They've done a really good job of that by, by default, but it's in there. And then they uh, LDO upgraded these motors now to a 0.9 degree stepper, which runs oh. way cooler. You are not sending me to the cooler. Than really? the stock ones. Yeah. Okay, like so these are what? One, these, are, these are 1.8 degree stepper, right? Those are, yeah. Those the are standard, okay. And yep. so these are 0 0.9, Correct. and they run cooler. They do, significantly cooler. Wow, yeah. okay. Which is then going to extend the operation, especially if we're talking about running them all day, every day. That's the hope, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So right here we've got the linear rail, and uh, on on your stock one, you'll notice you've got the V wheel set up, <laughs> yeah. um, which is it's pretty pretty common for the uh, Creality stuff. So one of our concerns is with the way the V wheels are on the default setup. You'll see because they're at a 45, you have the potential now to add a twist to them, which is really not what the V wheel setup is kind of designed to do. Yeah, they clamp like this or like this, but they're not built for that that twist and, or rotation. And you can kind of see if you plan it, you'll get some twist on this plate that is not nearly as, as rigid as when you have a linear uh, rail setup. So we did a linear rail upgrade okay. on this one. Yeah. Oh, and I would imagine if you get a little bit of twist now, then over time with 24 seven operation, you're going to eventually get a failure. And that's the big concern for, for me, that it's, it's not necessarily just about print quality and stuff, but it's about reliability long-term. Okay, and it's just, you just added a linear rail. Pretty straightforward, yeah. So if we put this like this, I can see that 
your uh, your LCD is tilted and you've got what looks like skis underneath. <laughs> That's right, these are French cleats. French cleats, I know you love those things. <laughs> I do love French cleats because it allows me to hang these on the wall, which frees up space for a lot of other things and space is at a premium where we are. Because the machine has to eject parts or make parts that are multiple feet long, yeah. then you either have to account for horizontal space to be able to hold and support the longer objects correct or a bin to catch objects that's right and so by mounting it on a wall you're effectively making your your print travel with gravity correct which means you no longer have to add that that support on a horizontal plane that's right and it's on a wall which is already going to then take up space that isn't being used anyway that's right Oh, that's awesome. And you'll see we, so to accommodate that, when we're actually interacting with the printer, we just change the angle of attack. Oh, on it's just the, a 3D printed part, right? It's just a 3D printed oh, part. Oh, that's awesome. And you'll see when we put it on the wall, how that makes it a lot easier to use. Well, why don't we get some cleats on this one, and why don't we put them on the wall? What Sounds do you say? Sounds good. And we're back in the newly minted print room. CR30's on the wall. On Thanks the wall. for helping, Pooch, man. Yeah. This was a lot of fun. Before we got them on the wall, though, we did have to do some configuration and calibration. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the first thing you do, uh, you're going to want to do when you get out of the box is obviously set the, the height of the nozzle on the bed, get that zero. Okay. There's a whole process for that. One of the other things we end up doing is printing a 100 millimeter long block or a block of known length so that we can calibrate the number of Z steps. Oh, that's right. Obviously, we like to print long things on these belts a lot of time, and if your steps aren't calibrated well, if you think you're, you know, over the course of a longer print, that matters. If oh, you're, I see. You're not like getting 100 millimeters when you want 100 millimeters. If you print 100 millimeters and you get 99 and a half, it's not so bad, but if you print 10,000 millimeters, it starts to add up. That's, okay. That's exactly right. Uh, so we got our calibration in, uh, and then we sliced some Joel bots. One of the other really important things that we ended up doing is seasoning the belts. Uh, seasoning the yeah. belts sounds like cooking. It does. It's like seasoning a pan, but in this case, the belts. So the the rubbery uh, surface of the belts that are coming with the CR30 now uh, seem to do better when you give it a really good alcohol wipe scrub. Um, <laughs> scrub, I did. Run it, you run had it through. Me I that. had you scrubbing away. This sucks, loser. And uh, it made a difference, wouldn't you say? It did when make we a were difference. doing our calibration, you could see it was actually starting to stick better once we kind of got that finish yeah. from manufacturer. Well, I was just going to say, you seem to think that it could be a, a, a function of the manufacturing process that ends up with a finish that just needs to be taken off, whether that's through like scrubbing with uh, isopropyl alcohol or just printing a number of revolutions until it's there? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I really do, and that's that's what we've seen in our experience with it. Okay, well, yeah. I did a little experiment too. So on yeah. this one, I added Vision Miner's nanopolymer adhesive on the bed. You can kind of see a discoloration of the bed, but the thinking was uh, I had a bottle here, and I thought saturating the bed with the NPA may give a result, and so we're testing it right now. Yeah. It seems to not be bad. Yeah, no, I think it shows some promise. <laughs> it shows so some I'll be promise. eager to see uh, how that does over time. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> so there's uh, a... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's the one you didn't put the NPA on, is it? <laughs> Wait, we're just, you're still going, right? Oh, yeah. Good, because that was fantastic. Listen, <laughs> listen, we have to roll with the punches. Bed adhesion on these belts has been a known issue. Yeah. And seasoning the belts is very important, so I'm gonna have to run a lot through this one. Obviously, this is showing promise, and so what I might do is add that nanopolymer adhesive here. I have a really big project coming up that requires the use of these CR30s, printing some five and six foot long things. Spoilers. Which doesn't go to the airport for a few hours, and so we'll actually try to get this one going again. But listen, dude, I couldn't have got this far without your help, and I just wanna thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Yeah, happy to help. There's a lot of upgrades on this one that I know you've added, and if people are interested on these upgrades, where can they go to find out more? Yeah, repcord.com, that's R-E-P-K-O-R-D. Uh, so it's no longer uh, R3P cord? No, not when you're putting it in the uh, web browser. That makes sense. And all people have to do is go search for CR30 or belt printer? Yeah, we have a whole section devoted to CR30 and the upgrades and our findings with it. So uh, it's on the website. Okay. Well, listen, uh, if you made it this far, you're awesome because you got to see that happen. <laughs> I couldn't have planned that better, which I didn't. No. 
you, well, if you, whatever. If you made it this far, awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. And as always, high five. Oh, nailed it. Yeah. All right. No I, look. That was the no look. That was no look. Let's get to work. All right.